Hi, this is Ben Code80, and in this video, I'm going to quickly walk through modeling and texturing a low poly mesh uh, ideal for mobile games. This particular object is going to be a buzzsaw type obstacle for a game I'm currently working on. So, we're going to start out with a cylinder primitive. We're then going to slice that into a single segment and use the array modifier to recreate that cylinder. Uh, and you'll see why that's beneficial in a moment. So under edit mode, we're going to press K to switch to the knife tool and slice from vertex to vertex to get the segment that we want. When doing things like this, it's, it's important to make sure you're going from vertex to vertex instead of edge to edge so you don't end up creating unneeded new faces. So now we're going to disable solid selection mode so that we can select all of the faces that we don't need in one go and quickly remove those. Now Blender has a, a bit of a habit of sometimes adding small fractional values to our vertex positions so it's often worth quickly going in there and, and fixing those. Now we add a cube primitive, remove the mesh data from it so we have an empty object and we're going to rename that empty object rotation. Switch back to our segment object, add the array modifier and then under object offset we'll choose our rotation empty. And now that rotation object's transform will be applied to each of the duplicates of the array modifier. So I'll switch back to that and set relative offset to zero so only the, the rotation object's transform is, is applied to those duplicates. And there we go, back at the cylinder. In this particular project that I'm working on, uh, it's a fairly fixed camera. So there's, there's no point in taking up memory and, and other resources, having those back faces that will never be seen. So I'm just going to remove those directly from the, the mesh itself. Now to create the teeth of the buzzsaw, we're going to select these outside faces and do a subdivide and then a subdivide again. And now using the edge loop select, we can quickly uh, select each of those horizontal and vertical uh, edge loops and then quickly do an edge slide, slide it up so that overlaps another edge and then do remove doubles. Uh, it's just a very quick way to, to do a subdivide in a, a kind of grid that you want. Now I'm just going to slide these two edges up because those two internal faces are going to be extruded to become our teeth. Now we can select those two faces, switch to the front view, press E to extrude, and extrude again. And now we can grab those two edges, bring them together to form the, the tip of the, the teeth and do a remove doubles to, to merge the edges. Now if we select this edge we can see that it's uh, it's merged. And we can just move this down into place to give the kind of teeth that we want on our bustle. And finally just remove those faces that we don't need for this specific project. Now you notice here that the subdivide has, has caused these kind of nasty overlapping faces on the side here. So we're just going to quickly remove those and, and fix that one single face. This one particular additional face seems to be hiding underneath the big face, so we'll just grab one of the verts and and pull that out so that we can remove the face. I'm 
can finally just grab this this one vertex here and then we can snap that back into place and merge so that we just have one clean face now you notice here that it initially doesn't snap and that's because the uh, snap to vertex will snap to what is under the mouse cursor not what is underneath the vertex Finally, just merge to, to join those two vertices together and do a remove doubles just to be safe but you can see those zero vertices removed so so we're fine now to create the the center piece of, of this buzzsaw we want to extrude this so we're going to use the knife tool again to slice the two edges that will make up our extruded part directly into the face you can just do this by hand grab these two vertices and just tweak them a little bit so it looks about right and then select edges and do an edge slide to, to move them into place So now we have the center face and we can switch to the side view and press E to extrude and there's the, the center piece of our buzzsaw. Now remember this is still using the array modifier so these, these two side faces that have been added by the extrusion need to be deleted because they're internal faces and they'll be duplicated all the way around. Now we're going to use the loop cut to add some additional edges here that will form a, a bevel on this front piece of the, the buzzsaw. So if those are added we can select the other edge, do another edge slide and slide that in to create the bevel. Finally, I hit apply on the array modifier to, to bake that down to the, the final mesh. Now if we go into edit mode, we can see there's a bit of an issue with the, the final seam here. So we're just going to manually select uh, each of those, those vertices and do a merge at center. One thing that's worth pointing out is I could have avoided uh, these discontinuities between the final edges by being more precise with uh, my original knife cuts. One way you can do that is if you hold down control while in knife mode, it will automatically snap to the center of whatever edge the cursor is currently over. So now with those merged, we can do a final uh, remove doubles just to make sure we don't have any outstanding duplicates. Now we can switch over to the UV editor and begin the unwrapping process for texturing. So here I'm going to use select similar in edit mode to very quickly select the faces that I want to make our, our UV islands. Uh, here I'm using select similar coplanar which is essentially if you imagine uh, a sheet of cardboard or something placed on, on the faces that you select any other faces in your mesh that would also fall on that, that sheet will be selected. So for large pieces of, of flat geometry, for example, that are made up of many faces, coplanar is the way to go. For the teeth here, using select similar, uh, but using area, which will select 
all the faces that share a similar area to the, the selected faces. And you'll see I'm using boundary select mode once I select these faces. And what that will do is select the boundary edges of the selected faces you have, which is ideal for marking scenes. And for all of these select similar modes, uh, you have various properties in the tools panel, such as threshold, which is useful for selecting more or less faces. Finally, I use edge loop select to select this long edge loop that goes across the, the whole uh, surface of the buzzsaw and then deselect the edges that make up the front faces uh, because I want the sides to share islands but the front faces to be one whole island. So now if we select the entire mesh and do unwrap uh, and then switch over to the unwrap properties and increase the margin so that we can uh, avoid the, the seams when we import this object into the game engine. Now for this object, since I don't need uh, unique detail on each of the, the teeth of the buzzsaw, we can basically make the teeth share uh, UV space so that the same texture will be used on each of the teeth and we can increase the overall size of our UV islands to, to maximize the uh, texture resolution that they get. Now luckily for us, uh, Blender's UV packing algorithm seems to only work in, in multiples of 90 degrees, which makes it very easy to just quickly go in and, and do a hard rotate at, at multiples of 90. And since we know the, the geometry is, is identical, we can very quickly uh, use snap to vertex and make each of these islands share as necessary. Once we've done that, we can kind of repack the UVs and scale and, and we're done. Okay, so before we begin texturing, we are going to quickly bake out the ambient occlusion map. And it's good to do this first for two reasons. Firstly, it's great to have that, that ambient occlusion preview in the, the real-time viewport. But secondly, it'll also help illustrate any issues we may have caused um, by sharing our UV islands. So we'll bake this at a low sample count just to get a quick preview. And if we switch over to the 3D view, we'll switch to material view, create a new material set it to shadeless so that lighting doesn't affect the object in the viewport. We'll choose our UV set and then finally choose our, our AO texture. And it looks pretty good except if you look on the sides here this is wrong. And as mentioned that's that's due to us sharing the UV islands so we can fix that very quickly. If we switch back into edit mode and press L to select islands. And then switch over to the UV editor, press S to scale, X to constrain to X, and then minus one, that'll flip it horizontally. And we'll do the same for this one too. And that should fix it. So now if we bake it again, we will be able to see if it's indeed fixed. And there you go no longer have that issue. So now that we know that our UVs are correct, we can switch over to the ambient occlusion settings and set samples to 20 and then bake again so that we have nice high quality ambient occlusion in our baked map. And there we go, looks pretty good.
So now for the texturing part, we'll switch over to the UV editor again and create a new image, call it diffuse. And then we'll switch to the material editor and the texture side. We'll add a new texture slot, uh, choose the UVs, and we'll choose our diffuse image. And now we're going to move this diffuse uh, up in the texture stack. And this is for two reasons. One, since we want to texture paint onto that texture. And two, so that we can multiply our ambient occlusion map uh, with our diffuse. So first I'm going to set a bleed to six pixels in the texture painter. Again, to fix seams. And we'll quickly just do a flood fill of everything to try this out. So now if we switch back over to textures and choose our AO map and then choose multiply, now you see we've got AO multiplied uh, with the diffuse map underneath it. So now that we have our material set up nicely, uh, we can use texture paint to paint our diffuse map. So I'm going to switch back and forth between texture paint and edit mode, uh, select the faces that I want to paint on, and then switch back to texture paint mode with masking enabled. And you'll see when I'm in edit mode, I use L to select islands so I can very quickly select those UV islands directly and then paint just to those. And also notice that I'm not specifically picking uh, both sides of the islands because those are shared. So painting on one will obviously affect the other since they're, they're sharing UV space. It's also worth pointing out that you should uh, keep an eye on Blender's site for the, the most recent builds. There was a quite long-standing bug in Texture Painter, uh, specifically with the bleed option that would cause all kinds of artifacts that would paint over uh, your islands and the textures, etc. And that's just recently been fixed. And there we go. Looks, looks pretty good. To navigate in first person mode like this, you press Shift F, which is very handy for quickly getting around your scene. Uh, also, if you press Tab, you enable physics mode, which will actually allow you to walk on your geometry. I hope you found this video useful. I'll have all of the shortcuts, etc., that I've used throughout on the blog post on my site, which is code80.com. And if you're watching directly on YouTube, you can check the description below for a link. And as a final step, if you don't need these individual textures, uh, you just need one single image, we can bake the whole thing just to one texture. So we'll just select the object, go into uh, UV Editor, create a new image called Final, and then finally go to Render, Bake, and do Final Render. And that will bake all of our textures together into one single image.